Hello everybody. I am in our room alone as Sarah is still um, recovering in the recovery room after her hypothermia treatment, which uh, went well, according to the doctors. Um, she, you know, was in there for the full time, no complications. The uh, I got a quick report uh, with the temperatures. I'm just going to give them to you in centigrade just because uh, I haven't converted them. That's how they had them, but she was at 41.8 uh, degrees C at um, for 15 minutes and then for 120 minutes at 41.6, which is um, basically right where you want to be. Um, at 41.5 degrees centigrade, um, Lyme is killed just by temperature alone. Um, and over the, the two hours, they've um, Dr. Dows and the and the team here have determined that two hours is um, a good amount of time. <laughs> uh, so uh, that was good, no complications. And so she came out. Um, and they kind of the, the you can you can you can wait around for updates. But really, the they they don't really give you any updates. They just say they're doing great. They're fine. Go do something else away from here. So there's some um, for those of you that know. There's a coffee machine on the on the floor one near the right next to the treatment room. That's where some couches where people wait. Um, but uh, during the day, I took some time to get some little uh, gifties and some flowers for. For Sarah, just to make um, next couple of days a little, a little easier, so um, so that's good. That's how I spent some of my time. I ate lunch and uh, hung out with the other. There's four people in total getting hypothermia, including Sarah, um, and so it was a, a full day. And so in the recovery room, Sarah Sarah shared a room uh, with another woman that was treated, getting her second treatment of her course. Um, and uh, so that's common when there's that many people, you end up sharing a recovery room and, and that was fine. Um, it's a typical hospital room right near the nurse's station. Um, uh, more hospital roomish than your dorm rooms. Um, Sarah was uh, pretty groggy and out of it, partly because of just the lingering sedatives, anesthesia they give you or her and um, so she was pretty well out of it, um, you know, responsive, but just very, just very tired and, and um, noticeably sedated. Um, but the doctor said that is, you know, not, it's not common, but that's just, that's, that can, that can certainly, that certainly happens, you know, um, uh, often enough. And um, she did have some uh, kind of fluid around her brain, which is, the doctor said, around 30% of people get a little extra fluid during this. I think it's just response to the heat um, the, the, in your, around your brain. It retains fluid. They gave her a special IV to help reduce that and draw that out. And um, they say that just by tomorrow morning, she'll be, um, that, you know, that'll be resolved. Um, all her vitals look great. Um, she did have some, she, they gave her some oxygen in the, in the room, the recovery room, um, just to help with some, I think to help with nausea and some of the head uh, issues. She did have a, a headache, didn't seem to be roaring, didn't seem to be a really bad headache, but um, it, it hurt her. Um, so did have some nausea afterwards and just looked pretty, you know, was just seemed totally exhausted. Um, so... Uh, and uh, I've just been kind of uh, puttering around myself in here. Now it's now it's getting late. I'm a little tired myself, uh, so I'm gonna turn in. But looking forward to um, seeing her tomorrow. Um, oh, quick quick add on. Um, we before we left, we uh, did get Reiki one trained, which was pretty cool. And so I um, gave her some Reiki, and that seemed to help her uh, go back to sleep when I was there. Um, and I think even, maybe even if you're not Reiki trained, I think just being with the person and, um, using light touch is, is very nice. So, um, so take that for what it is. <laughs> I think I'll sign off for now and I uh, will catch up with you all in the morning. Good night.
Hi everybody, it is Saturday evening here. We just finished dinner. Um, this is, Sarah had her hyperthermia treatment on Thursday. So this is the second full day after treatment. And uh, uh, basically a lot of it's been just been spent resting, which is good. Help her body heal, you gotta listen to your body. Some people were, uh, some people are up the, um, you know, the day after and, and otherwise, but you just kind of listen to your body and see what it needs. Sarah's needed a lot of rest and sleep. But then they crashed? Uh, yes, and some of those other people that were up earlier did crash um, subsequent days. Uh, so, you know, just like anything, you got to kind of trust your body and try to listen to it. Um, I talked a little bit about um, kind of my side of the the night, so do you want to talk about just how you, the, your experience coming out of anesthesia on that night a little bit? Um, <clears throat> I just remember waking up in the recovery bed. <clears throat> they call it an ICU, but I don't know why. <laughs> well, it's, it's just like a room that's right across from the nurse's station, and if you press the button, they're there within two and a half seconds. And they have oxygen for you there. It's like piped in, so it's just a little more of a hospital <clears throat> room as opposed to your dorm room. Um, so I remember waking up, and then I remember throwing up. <laughs> which, which, um, is, which happens. I don't know if it's common, but it certainly does it's happen. It's pretty common for me. So, well, yeah. Um, after anesthesia. And Matt came in soon after that, and I had a little water, and then I threw that up. Um... But for about the first 24 hours, I had a very hard time talking, yeah. lifting my limbs, <laughs> yeah. breathing, um, basically everything. Like I just laid there and didn't move because everything was really hard. My throat still hurts. I think maybe, I don't know why, but it doesn't hurt. It's just hard to talk. Well, they do put a... Um uh, a, a tubes down. They put. They didn't do that. No, they do. Oh. I'm pretty I sure. I said they didn't. Um, I thought. Well. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> there's a, there's a form that goes over a lot more like the risks. You know, there's the kind of a general risks of anesthesia, but that might be. Again, they talked about it. But they said it. They wouldn't do that for me. Yeah. Anyway. Um. Oh, you missed that meeting. So I think they told me that at that meeting. Oh. Um. But basically. After I said goodbye, um, they wheeled me in, and um, I had Hilda, and um, <clears throat> pretty quickly I like got undressed, and I got under a towel, um, you get totally naked, sorry, it's really hard to talk, um, <clears throat> and uh, they start giving you stuff, and um, I only was awake for a few minutes, and I, um, Hilda was so sweet, she was like the softest hands, and so I just kind of grabbed her hand, and, uh, and then that was the last thing I remember, and then I went to sleep, and, <clears throat> I mean, it's not something that feels difficult, because you're just sleeping the whole time, but, um, then you wake up, and you feel... Like, for the last two days, it's just, I mean, <clears throat> I felt fatigued, like, extremely fatigued for the last five years. I would say extremely fatigued. And this is, like, another world. <laughs> like, I've missed a lot of dinners with Matt and Charlotte because I was too tired after taking care of her after school or doing whatever with her. But this is, like another level of like Matt had to like spoon feed me and I only could eat things that I just could swallow like I couldn't eat things that I had to chew so I had applesauce what else did I have applesauce was some of the first things I had a little bit of eggs oh, yeah, uh, scrambled eggs but they were, <laughs> I basically swallowed those yeah. yeah um yeah she still seemed very um very sedated um in a way even though that had kind of worn off it was just Kind of just really intense Herx reaction, <clears throat> or Herxheimer reaction, probably is what it was. Um, but now she's you know slowly improving. Got up and showered and uh, showered and came down to dinner and 
have some conversations with people, but I think that's uh, all the spoons that she has for today, pretty much. So we're going to get back into bed and then go to bed um, in a couple hours. Oh, the night nurse. She does not like me. <laughs> well, that e well, yeah, that evening. She's very nice other nights. <laughs> so <laughs> I kept saying, please call my husband. Please give me a more sleeping pill. No, it is dark. It is quiet. You will sleep. And I was like, I can't sleep. And she like did not. She's like, no, I like, will just leave the room. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You did have a lot of medication that, that day, so, but. That is hard. You tried taking a unisom, but the unisom wasn't, yeah. wasn't doing it. I would tell other people that the person sharing the room with me, who was very nice and felt so, she was so sweet, she took like two very real yeah, like, she had drugs. Her, yeah, she, she had her own medication. Yeah. She didn't sleep either. So my understanding is, I wish I'd known this, but a lot of people don't sleep that night in the recovery room. And maybe it's because we've been in a sleep-induced state all that, day that is for what the seven doctor, hours. Yeah, that's what the doctor said. But You're, for some reason, I didn't know that. So I wish I'd known. Yeah. The um, induced sleeping during hyperthermia throws off your sleep cycle. So um, sleeping that night is hard. Oh. Hi. Hi. And there's Carrie. Okay. Okay. That's it. Bye. Thank you. Love you all.